Christmas, beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere I go. What does Christmas look like on your bookshelves in the summer? <laughs> Don't forget, if you do happen to enjoy my videos, to like them and subscribe to my channel. The more the merrier. So for this big haul, I ordered a couple of the books off of Amazon, the rest of them from Thrift Books. Mainly, I bought adult reads. I did buy one from YA, and so this is the one YA book I did buy called Holes by Louis Sakar. It is a Newbery Medal winner. Holes is a book that follows a character called Stanley who is sent to a correctional boot camp and the warden purposes the people who are sent there to dig holes. Now what are they in search of? What are they being purposed to find? And I look forward to digging into this book. Some of the adult Christian reads that I came across were books by Francine Rivers about women from the Bible. I picked up uh, Unveiled, which is about Tamar, Unspoken, which is about Bathsheba, and then Unashamed, which is about Rahab. While the covers are not necessarily the most attractive, the tagline being one of five unlikely women who changed eternity definitely has piqued my interest. I really feel like this is going to teach me a great deal has the potential to be those kind of five-star reads that are life-changing, inspirational, uh, that you can't put down and that you remember for a long, long time to come. While I picked up Christian books about women, I also picked up Christian books about men. I found this book written by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins called The Jesus Chronicles and read about Matthew's story. I loved this book. I couldn't put it down. It was one of those books that just brings the Bible to life, which helped me to pick up the rest of the Jesus Chronicles. So we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They are a handful. And who doesn't like a handful of books? <laughs> Onto the kind of like self-help section. Purchased off of Amazon. Hope for healing from domestic abuse. Reaching for God's promise of real freedom written by Karen DeArmond Gardner. I first saw and heard of Karen on Instagram. I will leave her handle in the description. I'm gonna read the back of this one to you. When someone leaves an abusive marriage, life isn't instantly fixed. In fact, the road to healing after domestic abuse is exhausting. But that exit is the first powerful step toward a future of strength and bravery. Karen DeArmond Gardner personally understands the difficulties and realities of this journey. She tackled heavy struggles when she left her own abusive marriage. Now she knows the liberating truth. Domestic abuse doesn't have to be a life sentence. Continuing with the self-help theme. Okay, people, I know what it is to have too much. Because, you know, I had four kids in four and a half years, and baby everything takes up so much space and then when you graduate from the baby everything you still then have kids that are constantly growing and changing whether it be their interests their clothing size their shoe size their the size of the bikes that they can ride all the things right so you accumulate and then you have to downsize get rid of and so in the spirit of downsizing and getting rid of i do not do things halfway oh no mm -mm. if i'm gonna do something then i'm going to do it and so I got all of Marie Kondo's books because why not? I did not know who Marie Kondo was until the Netflix show, her Netflix show came out. Are you with me? Am I the only one? So anyways, I watched the Netflix show and then I was like, hmm, I could have a problem. Maybe I do. But you know, I do believe if I'm going to be accused of hoarding anything, it will be that I hoard books. And I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not. I'm going to keep those books because the books bring me joy. All right, so we got we got the Marie Kondo trio to make sure that I am covered in all aspects and areas of life as I downsize and seek to organize. 
And just in case there is not enough joy found there, I also purchased It's All Too Much, an easy plan for living a richer life with less stuff by a man named Peter Walsh. Okay, and then finally, to finish up this wrap up of a book haul, I have two fictional titles that I have been wanting to pick up and read for some time. And so one is Yellow Crocus. One is Yellow Crocus. And I'm going to read the back to you. Moments after Elizabeth is born, she's taken from her mother and handed over to an enslaved wet nurse. Maddie, a young mother separated from her own infant son in order to care for her tiny charge. Thus begins an intense relationship that will shape both of their lives for decades to come. Though Elizabeth leads a life of privilege, she finds nothing but loneliness in the company of her overwhelmed mother and her distant slave owning, her distant slave owning father. As she grows, Maddie becomes more like family to Elizabeth than her own kin, and the girl's visits to the slaves' quarters and the lively and loving community she finds there bring the two closer together than ever. But can two women in such disparate circumstances form a bond like theirs without consequence? This deeply moving tale of unlikely love traces the journey of these very different women as each searches for freedom and dignity. I anticipate all the feels from this book. I'm expecting to cry. I'm expecting to be completely moved. I'm expecting really great things. I have not read a review of this lately, um, but I would not be shocked if this gets five stars from me. Final book. It's called Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. 16-year-old Asa never intended to pursue the mystery of fugitive billionaire Russell Pickett. There's a $100,000 reward at stake. And her best and most fearless friend, Daisy, is eager to investigate. Um, for $100,000, perhaps I'll get in on this investigation, too. So together, Aza and Daisy navigate the short distance and broad divides that separate them from Russell Pickett's son, David. Aza is trying. She is trying to be a good daughter, a good friend, a good student, and maybe even a good detective, while also living within the ever-tightening spiral of her own thoughts. Mm-hmm. Turtles all the way down. Okay, are you ready for this? There are 14 books, for y'all, 14. Let's see if I can hold them all at one time. And now I fully understand all the YouTube thumbnails of people's book calls where they're like, look like they're about to fall over, <laughs> fall forward, fall back, but they're just gonna fall over because their books are so heavy. <laughs> I better hurry up and put these down before I tip over. Until next time, friends.